Hello and welcome to Community Chats. I'm your host, Ali Hammer, and today we're joined with James Litchens, the Associate Director of Emerging Technologies at Art Group. James, thank you so much for being on the show today. Can you start by telling us about Art Group? Hi, Ali. Thanks for, for having me. Uh, look, so firstly, Art Group, we're uh, probably Australia's most kept technology service provider secret, really. Uh, we focus on making meaningful impacts to large public, private and, and government organisations in, in three areas. That's cloud, data and digital experiences. And the reason why I say we're kind of Australia's secret is you might not necessarily know our name, but you most likely know our work. So, for example, we ensure that you're, if you order a Domino's pizza, that it arrives hot and fresh and with the right ingredients. Uh, we manage their cloud infrastructure that holds all their stores and their distribution systems together. Uh, for New South Wales residents, we keep them safe during the bushfire season. We built, we're responsible for the fires near me mobile app. Uh, for Victorians, we keep uh, I live in Victoria, keep us on the move uh, with the PTV mobile app that we've just built and released. And most recently, uh, the Victorian DHHS coronavirus response. We've, our data team have been working with um, the government to help speed up the testing results port, uh, reporting platform. So during our second lockdown in Victoria, we were able to get the results to the Premier as quickly as possible to help make those important decisions that we're going through right now. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, my ears definitely perked up when you said pizza and then moving on from some of the government work you've been doing, that's really incredible. And our group do offer many services. You go from migrations, you work on IoT, AI. So can you tell us about some of the latest jobs in emerging technologies and how have you helped your customers? I mean, you've mentioned so many unbelievable case studies above. Are there any others that jump to mind? Sure. So uh, from an emerging technology space, there's a lot that we're always looking at and, and trying to identify and evaluate and work out what is best for our clients to really look at leveraging to give a good return and, and a, a good business outcome. There's one I'll, I'll sort of focus on today, and that's actually built off the back of Amazon Textract. So it's around document digitization. And in fact, there's two, two uses of it. One uh, is with a startup company called Wrapped Insurance. Uh, we most just recently helped them release an app that basically is th their startup is trying to disrupt the insurance industry in Australia um, by specifically focusing on simplifying the complexities of when you're trying to have however many insurance policies to look after your car, your house, your body, your teeth, your anything and everything and your pet even these days. Uh, and the way that this works is the ability to scan and understand any insurance policy um, without knowing or, or knowing what that form looks like and the way it's all laid out. So it's very easy to get on board. And that's once again, using yeah, the power of Amazon Textract and then other systems in behind that to, to build off it. You mentioned there was another use case. Yeah, that's right. So this one I think is really exciting, especially for me in emerging technology, because it's taking an old existing process where you've got paper-based forms and paper-based systems and then trying to leverage the use of technology to help improve the outcomes of that without having to do massive organisational change. And essentially what this is doing, it's reducing, uh, sorry, it's saving about 75 to 90% of manual data entry costs. It's increasing accuracy and it's unleashing the power of data-driven decisions in organisations without having to go and completely digitise a process or um, retrain existing staff. And so this is fantastic when you've got people that are working out in the field where a clipboard and paper is yeah. actually the way to go, uh, whether you're a mechanic, whether you're um, servicing um, large scale infrastructure, or even in training, when you're running on site trainings where you don't necessarily have data connectivity all the time. And so what we're doing here is, and we just actually released the live demo on our website now. So that's yeah. something everyone can go and have a play and try it themselves. Because what it is, it's really amazing how the ability to digitize this data and then pull the right data out to go into your system and then more data than you would ever have had before when you've got someone entering that data themselves. And so this is that sort of tactical step between now and then complete process digitization in the future. 
Amazing. I mean, that's so relevant as well. So I am going to go jump on the website and have a play around and see if it works. And um, as well, you know, you've mentioned you work with startups, but a lot of large enterprises as well. So what are the customer profiles that Art Group usually work with? Because it does sound like a lot of these workloads could be quite large. Do you mostly work with enterprises or smaller companies or where are you guys focusing a lot of your time? Look, we certainly have a very much a spread. Uh, and generally, I would say it's more uh, large, large organisations. And so, for example, um, like I said, with Domino's Pizza as, as, a, as a large sort of workload, that's Australia and New Zealand. So that's a huge volume of what we're managing there. Same thing with um, Department of Education in Queensland, working with them, there's a lot of data there. But similarly, we're working with smaller organisations, we're working with startups even, um, and, and it's actually really exciting. And I talk about it as exciting from emerging technology because it's kind of like being a little bit like a startup inside our business of trying to work out how technology helps. But it actually flows through to how we operate as a, as a business. We often introduce our large clients to the small startup um, mm -hmm. partners. And, and that's very much our approach of being in a partnership with our customers. So that in the case of that, the startups get exposure and introductions to large businesses who can help them achieve something they couldn't and vice versa enterprises get a little bit of disruption i suppose about being introduced to startups and getting some of that mentality that a lot of enterprises are really trying to embed in their businesses that's really cool it's, it's great to hear when you know a partner can actually you know be really good at both catering to the enterprise and the startup space it's kind of rare some people you know have a niche in one so that's awesome James, I also heard you're working in the digital twin space. So can you tell us about your vision and what trends do you foresee? It's awesome. So I, I'm clearly excited about a lot in this discussion, but um, so digital twin, my house, I've got a digital twin of my house. Um, in fact, that light um, in the background turns on and off automatically whenever we're in video conferences, as well as a couple of other lights in the house. So my wife and I don't interrupt each other. Uh, there's a video about it online if you want to have a look at it. And um, I, I talk about that because Digital Twin is gathering a lot of momentum and, and at its core, it's really just creating a virtual model of a physical object, process or a whole system. But a lot of what gets discussed and what's showcased online is about very large future state, huge visions uh, where we're talking about whole smart cities or basically when you see it, you think, okay, how many years and how many millions of dollars of investment does this need? Yeah. Whereas our focus for ARC, we're very much focused on making it more accessible and easy for businesses to get started. Mm -hmm. So we've created a four step approach, which essentially sees about $50,000 Australian produce a tangible return on investment, a genuine business outcome. And it's actually setting up the whole platform to grow and expand over time. Um, and I talk about that because when we see the vision and, and what it can become, the trend I see is, there is such versatility in, um, in digital twins where it can be used in smart farming. So getting a greater yield and actually lower insurance premiums, um, retail environments, saving costs and increasing revenue by getting the next best actions on team scheduling. And this is just based on real time customer queuing and foot traffic data or for event venues and stadiums as we you know, come through as we continue through COVID and um, start to go out and about again, venues have to have a reason to have people have their events at their space and also make it as safe as possible. And this actually gives a great opportunity where a digital twin can play mm. and have guests be able to understand where the best way to go is. Uh, actually, a better experience overall where they won't miss a moment of the action because they can find out where the best food or drink vendor or that all important trip to the toilet is uh, straight from their phone with real-time information so cool it's so interesting because i'd actually i know what digital twinning is but i'd never heard of the term digital twin space so really cool thank yeah. you so much and lastly for anyone who's watching this video and they're thinking wow this is blowing my mind how do they get in touch with you where do they go awesome so our website is arc dot group it's a r q because we're a little quirky uh dot group 
Uh, so you can find our website there. There's a lot of content there, but also on LinkedIn, uh, where there you can certainly find me on LinkedIn under James Litchens. And we've got a lot of different things that we're sharing all the time across not just emerging technology, but cloud data and the digital experiences like mobile voice and augmented reality as well. James, I've really enjoyed this, tri uh, this chat. So thank you so much for being here today and for telling us about all these cool things and all the amazing case studies that you've been mentioning. It's really fascinating stuff. So thank you and we'll see you next time. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. See you later. Bye.